I have a question, Stuart. This is Melissa. Hi. Um, during meditation, often my um, right hand gets really, really hot. And I'm wondering, well, about anything about that. <laughs> Just let it be what's happening. I was wondering what you have to say about that. I mean, look, uh, obviously there's a lot of Shakti in that hand. It's getting hot. There's a chakra at the center of the palm of the hand. Uh, there are chakras really in every, you know, fingertips, you know, and I mean, there's nothing to really say about it except open and let it come into you, draw the energy through your hand into the heart chakra, or through the arms into the heart chakra, and find another way of absorbing and taking in Shakti that can work to help you go very deep inside yourself. You know, also, uh, you know, it could build and get, you know, super strong and transform your hands into hands that'll do healing, you know? It's a very real possibility. So I wouldn't analyze it or try to figure it out or what's happening to me. Or, I'd be grateful and I'd let it build, let it get stronger, let it grow inside you, you know? Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. So funny, every time somebody leaves, everybody bounces into a different place. <laughs> and I, I'm looking here and the person is now over there. I don't know if somebody left, but I don't know what happened. He just bounced from one side of my screen to the other, Melissa. <laughs> the new city. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Look, there's an element in meditation that eventually evolves in people that do it over time and you know, have a sincere need to develop a connection with spirit. And that's mudra, you know, which are hand positions. And it's not something you can, you know, diagram on a blackboard. You can, the hand positions, you can do it. You see them in books. But it's something in a human being that is an organic part of their inner growth. It just happens because they are ready for that level of interaction with spirit to happen. And every movement of the hand can open, you know, a completely new area in the cosmos. I mean, you see paintings of the Buddha or statues of the Buddha, paintings of Christ, you know, they always have all these hand positions there. And it's the position, you know, they're, positions that manifest as, you know, a person practicing deep inner meditation, whatever, as they grow, it evolves into that. And, you know, that could be part of why your hand is getting hot. It could be evolving into eventually the use of mudra to help you in your spiritual practice. There is a mudra that goes with it. Interestingly, now that you bring that up. Yeah. The mudra is very powerful, but it's not, again, you cannot, you know, analyze it, think about it, pretend that you're doing it. <laughs> uh, it just happens organically. Healing also happens organically. Hands are healing instruments. And as you grow inside, you develop the capacity to heal because you have arrived at a place in your inner evolvement where you're ready to do that.
Does anyone else have a question? Now this exists in every human being. And it manifests when people evolve to the place where they, it can manifest. But everybody has that potential inside them. Can't get upset of yourself if you don't have it, if it hasn't happened yet. It's just a matter of evolving in your spiritual practice and these things begin to take place. Does anyone else have a question? Stuart, I'd like to ask you a question. Yes. Um, Stuart, in, as I get older, um, I find myself, because mostly of the COVID, really realizing that I'm on my own in this life. I come in by myself, I'm gonna leave by myself. And I wondered if you would talk about, please, the condition of loneliness. Being on your own does not mean you have to be lonely, Chris. Loneliness comes out of a neediness somehow to connect with other people that are supposed to make you happy and bring joy to your life. And rarely do they ever do, you know? I mean, you know, loneliness and being alone are very separate entities. There's nothing wrong with being alone. You know, I mean, look, I've spent years of my life, I've written, I don't know, a dozen books. Every one of them was written alone. Yeah. But because of that situation, that creative energy really flowed and created those books. So I wouldn't equate loneliness with being alone. Being alone can be a very productive uh, situation for a human being. Loneliness is a kind of neediness, emotional neediness in us that is trying to clutch onto people. You know, we need somebody in our life who's going to you know, justify why we're alive. You know, we feel alone because we don't have some that. Eh, to me, that's all just, you know, that's an interference. A hindrance to a spiritual growth. Being alone, ultimately, we all have to, in, you know, in our aloneness, confront higher energy in the universe. Mm -hmm. We have to embrace higher energy in the universe. So I wouldn't, you know, equate those two things or even try to, oh, I'm alone, I'm alone, I have nobody in my life. You know, sometimes that's, you know, not so bad, Chris. <laughs> I've been enjoying it very much. <laughs> and then, but there's something human in me. People bring a lot of baggage when they come yeah. in, right? Then you have to be, there's nothing wrong with that. You have to just be strong enough to deal with their baggage. Yeah. You have to be strong enough to deal with your own aloneness. You have to build an inner life that whether you're with 50 people, one person, or by yourself, you're always with God. Yeah. Thank you. I wanted, I needed that. Does anyone else have a question? I have a question. Yes. Um, it's kind of weird. I went, I got a massage a few days ago with somebody I never met before. And they like, when they pressed on my, the back of my head and the back of my low back, it, the energy, like it shot up on like the back of my spine in a way that has never happened before. 
And I was kind of just curious about like, like somebody else touching me and that happening. And um, just, it, I don't know. It just, I, my question, I guess, is just, uh, I don't know what the question is actually. It just was confusing. <laughs> well, you know, look, uh, I mean, uh, Kundalini rises in many ways. You know, and it could be through a massage, it could be through chiropractic, it could be through many acupuncture, it could be through many different types of experiences we have. You know, my thing is, I keep getting back to this all the time. You know, I mean, look, now you have to be centered inside in case a thing like that does happen. You're grounded in yourself, you're strong enough in yourself to be able to benefit profoundly from the experience. I mean, you were probably ready for that experience to take place in you. And whoever the masseuse was, they touched something on your spine that activated it. Now, the question is, can you truly benefit from that? Can it help you in your spiritual growth? It's not just an experience, you know? Can you benefit from it? Can you truly allow that kind of energy, you know, to open up whole new areas of growth inside yourself? I mean, obviously, Rachel, you were ready for that to happen. And too often we analyze it, we're afraid of it. What is it? What, you know, what happened to me? Instead of just absorbing it and letting it take you to another place inside yourself. I mean, you've been doing this meditation long enough that uh, somebody could possibly touch you on the base of the spine while you're getting, could activate Kundalini. I think it's great, Rachel, that kind of thing can happen. It means you're ready to take a major step in your life and your inner growth. Does anyone else have a question? I mean, I always kind of kid around, you know, about Kundalini. People always use and still ask me about, I always tell them it reminds me of, you know, Italian ice cream, you know. I don't like to get into discussions of it because it's a very private experience and it's a deep experience that somebody has. And people have that experience when they're ready to have it. I mean, you can also have it doing drugs and it can release energies that are so powerful. They can really, you know, do very serious damage inside a human being if a person isn't ready to deal with that kind of energy. You know, it's very funny to me because the first time I ever heard the word Kundalini, I was 18 years old. I was working in a coffee shop on 59th Street in Lexington Avenue in Manhattan. And I was a counterman serving hamburgers, et cetera, et cetera. And there was, a, there was the, the manager of the restaurant, you know, was a Buddhist, vegetarian and a Buddhist. And he and I used to have discussions all the time about spiritual things. And one day he looks at me and he whispers and, you know, really like some great mystery. You know anything about Kundalini? 
So I said, no, no. He said, I've seen it in books. Okay, I have no idea what it is, I told him. Second time I heard the word Kundalini, I was living on the left bank in Paris. And I was, I was stoned with a friend of mine. You know, it was like two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. And he, this friend of mine gets on his knees, raises his arms in the air, and says, oh, sacred Kundalini in the sky. And that's the second time I heard the word Kundalini. And the third time I'm sitting with Rudy and he says, you know what kind of meditation you practice? I said, Rudy, I, I don't, I, all I know is it works. I don't know what it's called. He said, you do Kundalini yoga. And then he told me he was teaching Kundalini yoga for 10 years when one of his students came up to him and said, you know what kind of meditation? <laughs> He said, well, what is Kundalini yoga? You teach Kundalini yoga. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's kind of amusing. And, you know, so much is made about Kundalini. And, you know, uh, it's the experience that is the key, not the word. It's opening of this really profound experience, because Kundalini, it's like a rocket ship and it takes you into the cosmos and takes you to a state of enlightenment. <clears throat> Does anyone else have a question? I once wrote an essay that was published in a book called Kundalini Rising, a very thick book written of essays written by, I don't know, maybe 50 different spiritual teachers. And I read, I didn't read the whole book. I read a lot of it. Every single essay was a different take on Kundalini. Every one of them was different everything from magic to God knows what, you know, astral traveling and this and that. And that. But every, every single essay was, you wouldn't believe you were reading about the exact same thing. So, so the point of all, what, everything I'm talking about is if you're ready for the experience. If the experience comes, just open and let it take you to another level in your life and don't worry you know what it is or how it is or start researching it and just let it take you to another level of your life it's really powerful experience and be sure that you've built a system inside that's ready to have that kind of experience So not many people on earth experience Kundalini, right? Very few people, right? You know, I don't know. People write a lot of books about it and people talk about it. And I mean, I got tired of it. I stopped going to those kinds of situations, you know? Mm. But uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I know when I was younger, I never, yeah, who knows, the, today you could probably find it in Webster's Dictionary, the word mm -hmm. Kundalini. When I was young, who knew Kundalini? Anything about Kundalini? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe some metaphysical scholar had read all the ancient texts and Hinduism and stuff would know something about it. But then that was all intellectual knowledge. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that chakras, kundalini, all these words that were completely foreign to me when I was younger, they're in the everyday vocabulary of 10-year-old kids. <laughs> My parents do kundalini yoga. You know, my they, they, they don't really know what they're talking about, but it's a word, you know? But once you get a taste of it and it really opens you inside, then it becomes a whole other situation. 
And then you don't talk about it, you know, you just do it. You quietly do it. Let it help your consciousness evolve. Does anyone else have a question you would like to ask? Okay, if there are no more questions, there will be meditation on Sunday. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you for those questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Stuart. They really bring a lot of depth to the meditation class. So God bless you all. I'll see you all on Sunday. Have a beautiful weekend. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stuart.